so much fucked up shit to get into. Us now? Welcome back to Little Snickers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey here with Jean-Benet Dolcalo. What's up, y'all? Jake Matera. Hey. Jeff Simmons. Man, our first live episode back at the lair. Who? Jake, I'm, I'm glad you wore your uh, your live underwear. I did. You want to show everybody what you're wearing? My long johns. He ate half of his licorice underwear already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't turn around or YouTube will flag it. Woo. Well, excuse? Flag it. Speaking of getting flagged, man. So we're here tonight to <laughs> honor the life and legacy of Theodore Kaczynski. Now, I briefly posted something on Facebook that just said, RIP Tech Kaczynski, I hope heaven's got a post office. Yeah. Within like 30 seconds, Very kind. I was banned from doing like five different things on <laughs> Facebook. So hopefully YouTube was a little bit more lenient Wow. in their... Uh, they're Ted Kaczynski in memoriam. I didn't oh even God. get to see that, but uh, congrats on all the flags you've gotten. <laughs> Thank you. Recently. <laughs> Thank you very much. I uh, also want to welcome the Trainer Brothers here with us tonight. Chris and Mike Trainer. Trainers. Buck, buck, everybody in the chat. Buck. Thank you to everybody joining us in the chat. Let me pull this chat up on my damn phone. Jake, Yo. you got another nice hat. This is two weeks in a row that you got this fucking... Yeah, I do what I do. <laughs> Summertime hat. Summertime. What's it say on there? It says little... Pickle oh, Rick? No, don't make it. it's, it's like pickle, is it a Pickle Rick hat? Denver, Colorado. Little High Plains uh, Comedy Festival. Looking little, good, Furman. Thank you. You love merch. I love merch, too. I love merch. He does. He, what he, are you talking about as I'm in a brand new Pixie <laughs> shirt? <laughs> <laughs> All right. How was the concert? It was great. You've been a little concert piggy lately. Oink, oink. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a couple weeks ago, I took Jake with me to go see Brian Adams and Joan Jett, and this motherfucker was showing his ass oh, man. for like three hours straight. There was an older couple next to us who were clearly just reliving some of the, some of the great moments from their years together. Rekindling the fire. And Jake was like busting jokes left and right, and this bitch could not keep her eyes off of Jake. It got to the point where like she was waiting for him to say something. Her husband's like <laughs> trying to put his arm around her. Like when Brian Adams starts playing a song that clearly had meaning to him and probably to her too, yeah. but like she would, she started angling towards Jake at a certain point. <laughs> What were you saying about him? I was just being a honey-baked ham, you know? One thing he yelled out uh, when uh, Brian Adams finished singing uh, Heaven, the last words were, we're in heaven. And then when the applause dies down, Jake yells out, Brian, I'm in heaven. I did yell that. <laughs> that fucking killed this bitch. <laughs> in a good way or a bad way? Oh, she loved it, man. Okay. Did she love it the whole time? Uh, in heaven. Okay. <laughs> yeah. She was giving him good looks, not no, uh, not evil yeah. eye. Okay, yeah. I was confused. Yeah, I thought you were saying bad things about the old people. No, no. Not, not at all. Good for you. Yeah. But I mean, how can you not? Uh, I have a big question. <laughs> well, I got a little Did brain. <laughs> <laughs> see if you know this one, big guy. Did Ted Kaczynski really die? He did. Man, whoa! And I didn't it, know that till now. It seems as though it was suicide. Oh man! Oh, how that happen? <laughs> let him alone. <laughs> he tripped into his sheet. <laughs> he somehow hung himself from his bunk. Dude, I found out that he tried to kill himself before with his underwear. Whoa. Laundry day or uh, stinky ones? No, it was a bad one, man. Really? <laughs> yeah. That sucks. That's going to be a clean suicide. Be rough. God. Yeah. But, like I said, we're here to celebrate the life and legacy of the late, great Ted Kaczynski. That is unless John wins really the great. coin toss tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. I was just watching the show, so maybe my luck. Wow, third episode. <laughs> I won. We got another one, Jake. How about yeah. that, man? <laughs> no, it's my. I, I won. We're not talking no, about. No, you didn't. We're not talking <laughs> that, about that. Kid. That's clearly the one that I called in my head. <laughs> Even when I win. But yeah, congratulations. John. Thank you very much. I don't know anything about him, really. Uh, I have. Um, a six degrees of ba Kevin Bacon type connection to Ted Kaczynski. Whoa. Yeah. What? Do you guys oh actively God. give out your P.O. box? <laughs> yeah. By the way, it's P.O. box 24. I figured it oh, out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. You were close. Kobe. Yeah. Your P.O. box neighbor probably got some weird shit in the past couple weeks. Damn. <laughs> yeah, poor lady with 27 got a fucking leather zipper mask. <laughs> fucking. Somebody said, said their own stinky Sharpies to you. 
Oh, I forgot. Oh. Yeah, Jake shoved the Sharpie in his belly button a couple weeks ago, and was, I got to mail it out to somebody who asked for it. All right, let's stay focused, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize a, a king-size Sharpie would be like anal beads for my belly button. <laughs> It hasn't gone back. Dude, I, I, I'm not... Here, I've opened... Um, there's a fart jar over there that I bought from Shannon from Gas Digital. <laughs> I'm completely honest with my smells. When I opened that thing on air for dad meat, I was completely honest in that it did not smell at all. I'm even of half the mind that she didn't fart in that thing at all. <laughs> However, when Jake stuck that fucking king size Sharpie in his belly button, that thing smelled <laughs> like a fucking a dumpster baby. <laughs> a goo goo gaga. It was pretty gross. I'm not going to lie. This is all really gross. Yes, we can move forward. Now, yeah. before we move on to uh, talking about shower. Ted. All right, one more okay. thing about this belly button. <laughs> I do want to add, we have a new dunce helmet, which we premiered last week. Oh, boy. <laughs> and here's the rules, folks. If one of us says something particularly dumb, if three consecutive people in the chat say either my name, John's name, or Jake's name, we have to wear this helmet until somebody else says something so stupid that three other people comment on their name. So don't be afraid to type our name three times into the chat to get one of us to wear this dunce helmet. I've just realized I don't like that the trainer brothers are both right here, right at the ready, ready if, to go. If they weren't here, Boys, they'd would you be mind holding this? Computer probably <laughs> even you can put it on if you want to warm it up. <laughs> oh, yeah, give it, your, give it your special powers. <laughs> We've actually got two uh, dunce shamans in the uh, in the studio with us today, who are going to uh, who are going to make this helmet even dumber. Just by it's already looking pretty good. Dude, oh, man, I'll you, that. this helmet fits Mike Trainer so good that you would think I got this fucking thing at lids. <laughs> Jesus, dude. All right, well, I'm 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 getting ready to teach you about Teddy. Tell me, tell he me was everything something about else, him. man. I'll tell you what. I found a website. I think it was called A Thousand Manifestos, where you can. There's a lot of manifestos out there, and uh, I read Ted Kaczynski's manifesto. You read the whole thing? I did. It's thirty five thousand words. It got me. Here's the. I'm telling you, when you have spare time, Jake, I would. It would probably take you about three dumps worth to read Ted Kaczynski's <laughs> entire manifesto. <laughs> But I oh, promise so you, only it's 120 worth it. pages. <laughs> <laughs> this guy goes for a long time. <laughs> Look at that! I've seen him. He disappears for fucking 35 minutes. A, I know. A pop. I know. Yeah. I've I've roomed with him. His short his shorts are different. They're different kinds of candy when he comes back. He pisses like his dick's a propeller, <laughs> and he's a marathon shitter. <laughs> But Jake, how familiar are you with Ted Kaczynski? I, I've owned a I've owned a book called The Unabomber for as long as I can remember, and I've about him. Yeah, but I've never opened it up. Mm -hmm. Too scary. <gasps> Too scary. Who got for it me. for you? Why do you own it? I think it was my mom's. Yikes! Yeah, Damn. she used to write him letters. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's actually uh, Unabomber, and it's a mommy manifesto about how much <laughs> she loves you. Read it tonight. You know what? I will. <laughs> I might write, write a manifesto for my children now that I say it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, Theodore Kaczynski was born in Chicago, Illinois, John, May 22nd, 1942. All right, you following along so far? Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> dude, his parents, uh, his father was Ted Sr., but he went by a very cool old-timey dude name, and his mom had a very funny name as well. His parents are named Turk and Wanda. Turk. Dude. Mm -hmm. That is like an old-timey nickname? Well, that does. Turk Kaczynski. That sounds like a, a civic-minded man of the uh, 40s. Okay. I yeah. like that. Turk Kaczynski, Jake. It does sound like a nice sandwich place. Ooh, Turk God. and Wanda's? Yeah. Talking Turk. Yeah, I'll take an open-faced <laughs> Turk Kaczynski. <laughs> um, by most accounts, like he had good parents. Now, there was one event that stood out from his childhood uh, that... His mother swears is where this little boy broke bad to a bomber. He was hospitalized for hives. Okay. You ever have hives, Jake? I never did. You sure? No. Love the hives. Let me check you right you now. Want some? <laughs> you got some? I got you. He went to the hospital for hives, and his mother swears that this is what caused him to detach from uh, socializing. Hives can be that bad that you go to the hospital and. And go into a fugue state? <laughs> it, it wasn't the hives that sent him into the fugue state. 
it was the fact that he was being held down by multiple medical personnel oh. and examined. And for some reason, there was a picture of this. Oh, sure, the old hospital photographer. <laughs> you see him going around. <laughs> My specialty is baby dicks. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you have any baby dicks that need picture in? This is trauma. <laughs> yeah, this poor kid's fucked up. He's being held down. On top of that shit, he's being photographed while he's probably got his dick out, which is never something a baby needs. No. <laughs> oh. So his mother saves this picture, and his mother creates a journal. And this is very odd. In this journal, she, she describes herself in the third person. Like, the mother observed her child Whoa. being restrained by medical personnel. The mother felt helpless. The mother sounds detached. <laughs> Maybe it helped her express her feelings better by oh. doing that. Mm. Take a little, what do you call that? Philosophy? Therapy? Go on. Yep, never mind. Mike, <laughs> you. All right. Just gonna, for those names to roll in the chat. So, old Teddy, who had a very cool nickname because his father was also named Ted, they referred to the Unabomber Ted Kaczynski as Baby Bomber. No, they referred to him as Teddy John. <laughs> Teddy John. Mm -hmm. Baby bomber. <laughs> Jake liked that one. <laughs> I think it's time. Yeah. I think that was it's pretty. Uh, <laughs> this is actually, I think we need to cut this thing in half. <laughs> King Solomon style so you guys can share this one. So Teddy cruises through fucking school. So much so that he's able to skip sixth grade. And Jake, when he's tested, what do you think his IQ is? I'm going to say high. How high? Like 140. I'm going to say 132. Y'all both wrong. 167. Whoa. Shit on me. This motherfucker's a baby genius. God damn. A little baby genius bomber ass. No boss what baby. age was he when that test was? Um, I think sixth grade, because that's the first grade where he skips. He skips multiple grades. God yeah, damn. Because so at so that smart. point. Because of what, Jake? So smart. He is. Why did you say that like Forrest Gump? I just was enjoying yeah, him. That's a big confirmation on Jake All right, right, All right there. Right. <laughs> yeah, you don't even need to put it. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, that's six in a row, so I think you have to wear it <laughs> twice as long. But his mom keeps journaling about him, and she becomes very concerned about his socialization skills. Jake, did you break the fucking retard helmet? <laughs> it's a dunce cap, Mike. It's not a helmet. break a retard helmet? <laughs> God gave me the strength. That thing is genetically engineered by German retard handlers. <laughs> no, they're not. This is made for skateboards and scooters. And slow boys. But he skips sixth grade, but his mother, he, he's flying from a, an intelligence standpoint, but his mother's really worried about his socialization skills. He's completely detached from the family. His brother said that when other family members would come over, as soon as they would knock at the door or ring the doorbell, Ted would go flying up to the attic and lock himself up there, which I can relate to. <laughs> <laughs> so none of this stands out to me. But his mother thought about having him tested by this doctor who was an early specialist in autism, this guy, Bruno Bettelheim. Now, he theorized that autism was a result of children being neglected. And they essentially locked themselves in these self-made fortresses to, to kind of um, ward off these feelings of be feeling abandoned. Okay. But she, she decided against that. She did not have him tested for autism. Oh, so no answers there. No. Even in the old definition where it wouldn't have mattered today. I think if, I think if it was... If it was presented better, it would have. Because you don't want to go to a guy that's going to tell you, like, oh, yeah, he's definitely got that thing because you caused it. Yeah. <laughs> Did your tongue come out because you got a buckle? <laughs> he can't put his tongue back in his mouth while the helmet's clipped. All right, if we get three Johns in the chat, John will shove his tongue back into his mouth. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> but, dude, Teddy cruises into high school, and uh, he becomes a trombone player. <laughs> Damn. He becomes a member of the coin club, which you would have something in common with him with. I guess so. Yeah, y'all would both be in the coin club together, not getting pussy. <laughs> would you jerk him off if it was just the two of you in the coin club? It was you not getting pussy in high school. What are you talking about? But you're in the coin club. Doesn't matter what club I'm in. You're not getting pussy in the coin club. I am getting the most pussy out of everybody in coin club <laughs> combined. <laughs> are you at least letting Fight Ted smell your fingers? For every time he said the. Yes, for sure. Me and Ted are boys, obviously. Oh, there's a lot of Johns in the chat. Oh, they wanted us to do the thing. I forgot. Kiss? 
Yeah, no, I oh, forget yeah. that. This one's void. Yeah, void. His classmates would refer to him as a walking brain. That's nice. No, because it's like they're essentially saying he's not really a person. He's just somebody who just knows a lot of things. Yeah. Like, Guys, my dick's down here. Yeah, right? I mean, that's what... <laughs> but, however, there are some, there are some other uh, <laughs> social maniacs in school with him, and they refer to themselves, and other kids refer to them as the briefcase boys. That's cool. Still they not getting pussy. things in a briefcase in school. No, they, because they briefly had cases, yes. Dude, I, when I was a kid, I used to dress up in a suit all the time. I loved dressing up in a suit, and I used to carry my dad's cassette holder. Mm-hmm. Like, it was a briefcase because it was like a leather thing. And, man, I thought I was all business. Then I started stealing candy necklaces. Next week, can you wear the suit and that helmet? I can try to squeeze it into <laughs> it for you. Can you rollerblade here? Yeah. yeah. In a suit? <laughs> he's so smart that he's able to skip 11th grade. And he graduates at the age of 15. What school do you think he goes to after he graduates high school at 15? Harvard. Yeah, baby. Yeah. He goes to Harvard. Now, there's a special dorm for delicate boys. (laughs) (laughs) That's on the building. (laughs) (laughs) They just cover the kids' eyes as they walk in. Like, nah, you don't need to see that. John Harvard's dorm for delicate boys. (laughs) (laughs) God, I miss John Harvard's. That was such a great place, man. I used to go there every Monday night after school. That's a real place? It is. It used to be a, a brewery. It's probably still a chain, but they just don't have it in Springfield anymore, which is where I used to go. John Harvard's is where I got the growler full of barley wine, where I ended up uh, shitting in my kitchen trash can the night the Red Sox beat the Yankees in seven games. 2004? I believe that's the year. Yeah. A game you had no dog in the fight for. No skin in the game. <laughs> I was screaming on my balcony, this is baseball history. I fell asleep on the couch, <laughs> and that night I ended up taking a shit in the kitchen trash can. You woke up and had to. I can't believe you didn't shit yourself on the couch. I'm shocked too. I could have sworn it was a dream, yeah. but then when I woke up, I woke up. Take you to bed. Let's keep it legit. I mean, yes, yeah, start unclipping it for sure. I just have it unclipped now, man. Oh my god, the those marks can. of where you've been sleeping on straps all night. <laughs> Jake, when I woke up, I was like, there's no way that, that had to have been a dream. I went in the kitchen. All right, give me that helmet. I earned it. I woke up. I went in the kitchen just to double check to make sure I didn't do that. Sure enough, there was barley wine diarrhea on top of the trash. You made no attempt at cleaning up. Was your, you know. My pants were a wreck. Yeah. Yeah. Did you wash them or did you toss them out? I don't remember. Are you wearing them now? (laughs) (laughs) I actually have them in a bag for you. (laughs) But he's sent to a house for delicate boys. And even amongst all these fucking delicate boys, he's a weirdo. A number of his doormates say that anytime he would come into the house, he would slam the door and he would fucking sprint to his room. (laughs) That's that's really delicate. Oh, my God, dude. (laughs) I mean, I went to school with... How many delicate boys were in your class (laughs) that you graduated eighth grade with? Graduated well, with? Well, let's, no, let's just say that you, you collected all the delicate boys you collected throughout your grade school years. I definitely had four to five delicate boys that I crossed paths with. Okay. Through one, one through eighth grade. Do you keep in touch with them? No. I'm sure they've all bombed something. Just reach out. Send them an email. Although, if you're a delicate boy, like an email notification coming through might make you shit your pants. <laughs> well, I would want that to happen. I don't. As a man who has shit, him, shit himself before. You don't I, want anybody to do it? No. Okay. I do it enough for everybody. <laughs> but dude, get this. He graduated Harvard in 1962. What do you think his GPA was? Was it 4.0? 4.1 4. 4. 4. something. No. 3.12. Huh. Which That's just getting to him. I, I graduated with a higher GPA from Delaware County Community College. After only... 20 years. <laughs> Got his ass, Mike. Statistically, that makes it harder then for Mike to do that. Yeah. Thank you, Jake. Yeah, I agree. Statistically. <laughs> statistically. Here's one thing I want to add before I move on from these Harvard years. There was a professor there named Henry Murray who was conducting an experiment, which some people say may have been an extension of the MK Ultra program. Whoa. Our friend Teddy John was taking part in this study where... 
um, for three years, at least once a week, he would go in there and they would film him. He would write down his personal views and what his objectives were in life and in regards to various subjects that would be thrown at him. And he was told that part of this experiment would be for other, other college students to critique his views and his objectives. They lied to him. They had a local lawyer come in each week to do this, and they would fucking rip him to shreds. Oh, no. And the goal was to see how stressed out these kids could become and how they would fare coming back week after week at knowing what's coming down the pike, being stressed, and having their views criticized. Jesus. That sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, John. So they would be hooked up to electrodes while this was happening so the doctor could measure the physiological response. So, John, I'm going to hand you Let three patches with electrodes, and I'm going to ask you to put one on each of your nipples. And once you have them set on your body. I'm not putting them under my shirt. All right. But I'll put them on my arm. And I've already programmed these, so these results will come directly to my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> and we got one more. Now, Do we want one for Jake? No, just you. We'll I, get the Jake. I think you're missing a big thing here. He's, he's qualifying your third nipple as a nipple again. And my fourth. I forgot you had a fourth one. That's big news. <laughs> All right. Well, now I got to give you a fourth patch. I don't need it because they're not going on my nipples. <laughs> All <laughs> right. So what's going to happen now is, John, I want you to tell the chat some of your points of view, some things that you love, some things that you hold dear. What are some of your goals? And, chat, I want you to eviscerate John so I can record these results into my phone and we could come up with a better representation of what John is. So for I, the next minute, tell these people about you. Okay. Is this really an app? <laughs> <laughs> you never know with him. No, you don't. You never know if you it's um, just the dumbest fucking... All right, starting now. <laughs> Truth be told, I'm watching a video of Bart Simpson getting his dick sucked by March. <laughs> but go ahead, John. <laughs> Gross. Um, I think you should have to pass a test to travel in the air. I think you should also have to pass a test to vote. I think um, there should be a... Uh, I think skiing should be more expensive. To keep who out? <laughs> John, what's your favorite color? Blue. Do you love your family? I do. Do you have pets that you love? I do. Are you a good pet father? I am. Are you a good brother? I am. Uh, who's your favorite friend to podcast with? Ryan Foster. All right. <laughs> with all those things being said, Chad, I want you to eviscerate John so I can record his stress responses into this app that I paid $1,000 for. The app that shows... Bart getting top from Marge. <laughs> <laughs> that somehow he got tricked in. I see that for free every day on Pornhub. And he got tricked in paying $1,000 for it. <laughs> well, this is in 4K. <laughs> well, well, that's different. <laughs> so, chat, let him have it. Whatever you want to say about John. It, could not even, it doesn't even have to be about his answers. Anything mean you've ever wanted to say about John. And I'm going to read them here. All right, so the first one is coming. It says, Pet Father was his clergy name. John looks like CGI Garfield. Yeah, heard that one before. <laughs> John wishes for security, but won't take the steps necessary. He That's pray so specific. <laughs> wishes for security. I bet John only has cats, so it doesn't count. Once again, John, you're addicted to the fast food. You're fat and floppy as could be, and you're going to lose your footage out. Footage? John, you look like three-day-old wet cat food smells. Oh, man. Ryan Foster will have no time for you when he has his daughter. <laughs> Ian Finance said John is a lame dead fuck. Is that really Ian? <laughs> what the fuck? John, you are a loser, a pathetic soul that is addicted to cheap fast food. You look toothless. <laughs> <laughs> what? John's beautiful eyes make me sick. <laughs> John is gay. Do I really look toothless? John looks like he smells like Del Taco. John Del Smallo Dick. <laughs> Juan Del Taco. 
John Del Cock Del Calo, more like Dong Smell Calo. <laughs> John could piss his pants and not his jeans. <laughs> Does that mean it won't go through? <laughs> and John is the super senior on the short bus. <laughs> all right. I think I might have all the information I need. Oh, we got one more. John could play Porky Pig in a live action Looney Tunes movie. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Damn John makes me feel better About myself Literally any day God damn What do these people Look like That are saying this He looks like He has Crohn's disease <laughs> He looks like He has Crohn's disease Because of the things On me <laughs> Just because It's what I look like I don't know That's just Alright one more And then I think I'll have enough information John uh, We're way past time <laughs> John, you will die alone in a hospital, and even the Jamaican nurses won't know you. <laughs> John ate Benet. <laughs> Thanks for doing this live, Mike. All right, so I have all the information I need, and I'm gonna I'm gonna enter this into a database, and uh, I'll let everybody know the results next week. But John, thanks for being a good sport about that, man. Yeah, no sweat. Thanks for um, buying these on one day Amazon delivery. <laughs> <laughs> the day Ted Kaczynski died and you came up with this idea. Here's something interesting about Ted Kaczynski that I didn't know until this week. In 1966, he considered transitioning. To what? Man, the 60s were fucking crazy. He thought he was a woman, Jake. Oh, wow. Yeah. He even made an appointment to see a psychiatrist to get the ball rolling. Come on. Come on. Or to get the balls rolling off of himself. <laughs> <laughs> to get the balls rolling out of his sack <laughs> and into my heart. <laughs> but he decided against it. John, he decided against transitioning in the waiting room that day. He said as he was about to be called back, he realized... The doctor came out with the knife to cut his dick off, and he was like, ah, that thing's kind of big. <laughs> I thought they would use a scalpel. That's a fucking cleaver. They came out with a, a guillotine to cut his dick off. <laughs> a little dick guillotine. Actually. Like a nice little cigar cutter. <laughs> you put your dick through the center hole and your balls through the hand holes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you have to spend fucking six hours with people making fun of your dick and balls and your socks. Shame. <laughs> your dick's got to tip the executioner. These are things that could have happened. But he has a change of heart, and he decides to dedicate his life to ending the lives of those who are pushing technology forward and those that are pro-industrialization. Whoa. That's so what his view... All right, I've been seeing yeah. all this shit about yeah. anti-industrial revolution. Yep. And uh, I never... I guess I did not know anything about him. So he must have hated Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. It's funny you say that because I saw a tweet. I don't know if it's real, but about uh, Elon Musk saying he had some good ideas. <laughs> Probably not real, but... Elon's a real rascal, him. man. Yeah. So at this point, he ends up going to University of Michigan where he gets his master's and his doctorate. And once he gets out of Michigan, he gets a teaching position at Cal Berkeley. And in 1967, he becomes their youngest professor. Damn. His students wow. fucking hate him because he teaches directly from the book and he refuses to take any questions from them. He just reads what's in the book? He just reads the textbook every class and he refuses to acknowledge questions in class. So, That's I mean, awesome. anybody could do that. Yeah. Yeah, and then if you can read, you can get this fucking job. <clears throat> Maybe I will become a University <laughs> of Berkeley teacher after all. You would be good out there. He yeah. lasts two years, and in 1969, he resigns abruptly. At that point, he decides to travel with his brother David, and they're both convinced that they're each going to live off the grid. They're looking around for spaces. Eventually, Ted settles in a spot in Lincoln, Montana, Jake. Okay. You ever been in Montana? I have. You have been to Big Sky, yeah, right? Yeah, I've been to Billings and Red Lodge. You do any weird shit there? No, not not enough. Did you touch your wiener at all? No. Did you touch your wiener outside? Yes. <laughs> That's weird stuff. Yeah, he's lying. I've seen <laughs> videos of him. He was talking to chicks at bars, <laughs> telling them he's the tuna bomber and to open their legs. <laughs> Jesus he Christ. had his hood up and he had sunglasses on, dude. It's going to blow that pussy. <laughs> Tuna bomber. So he he gets a little space for himself. Um, it's 10 by 14. 
This shack, this is where he eventually gets captured. It still exists to this day. He was there for decades. He was there for yeah. decades. Jesus Christ. The plot, it was not a big plot. It was an acre and a half. So as people began to encroach on his space further and further, he became nuttier. And he would do w- weird fucked up shit to his neighbors. He would be caught like staring in their windows. There was one neighbor who swore that he was the person responsible for killing nine of his dogs in a 10-year span with strychnine. Jesus. Whoa. Christ. Annually, killing his neighbor's <laughs> dog every year. It's, it's how he'd celebrate his birthday. <laughs> yeah, I but, swear. It's but it was never proven, story. right? So it could have just been, they could have been the worst possible dog owners of all time. Yeah. They could have been. But Jake, here's an interesting strict nine note. So in 1982, there was something going on in suburban Chicago called the Tylenol murders. Some fuckface was traveling around to, to pharmacies in the suburbs of Chicago taking bottles of Tylenol off the shelves, taking them somewhere, putting strychnine in the tablets, then walking back to the store and putting them back out for sale. Whoa. Numerous people fucking died. And there is... Is that a TikTok trend? (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like a TikTok trend from the 70s. It sounds more like a TED Talk trend. (laughs) So Ted Kaczynski, he was considered to be one of the suspects for that. Although there is an image that was produced of a guy who was a person of interest that I don't think is Ted Kaczynski. But it's interesting considering this guy just came up and said that he thought he killed his dogs with strychnine. Yeah. And in Ted Kaczynski's old hood, people were dying of strychnine poisoning. Something funny. Uh, in 1978, Ted needs money, so he goes to work with his brother at a foam rubber factory. His brother's his boss, and Ted actually starts dating a woman there. First time in his life he's getting a little... I don't know. He didn't get it, so let me back that up because I don't want to put this lady's business out there. She did not give him any pussy. I know you're about to say her full name and address, so... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ellen Tarmichael was a very sweet lady who did not give him pussy. Okay. Confirmed? She did. I believe her. She says that she went on two dates with him. The first one, they went out to dinner. The second one, I think she realized started to realize what a weirdo who he was because for the date, he invited her over to his parents' house where they made a pie together with his parents. That's wholesome. That's nice. No, that's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's dumb. That's crazy. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, do we have any jakes in the chat right now? <laughs> now, all right. So after the second date, she tells him she's like, "Look, it's just not going to work out." In front of his parents at the fucking <laughs> at the pie table. The pie. <laughs> <laughs> just mouth. Wow, this boysenberry is delicious, Mrs. Kaczynski. <laughs> Ted, I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> but and the, let it be confirmed that I did not give you pussy. <laughs> so when, when Mike Rainey talks about me in thirty years, Ted does not take this well. He goes back to work, and on the. Uh, the job bulletin board, he starts writing dirty limericks about this woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude, the original Facebook wall. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you have no idea how much of a wolf I am. <laughs> Wolves are prepared to hunt alone, even though they are best suited for packs. But no, I don't know what he fucking wrote for this limerick. Was that a haiku? Uh, limerick. It was not. Yeah. I searched high and low to find this limerick. I could not find it. However, I did write a couple limericks that I think he may have presented to her. Would you like to hear them? Sure. Okay. Oh, God. All right. Limerick one. Girl, you know I'll be sending them bombs. Sometimes I kill them like Jeffrey Dahms. <laughs> but all I'm going to eat is that sweat fishy, tr- is that sweet fishy treat. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Under those Shrek pajamas. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Limerick? Yeah. Okay, a limerick would be like... Eight, nine, eight or nine syllables, first two lines, five no. or six for the third and fourth, and a limerick. You're thinking of a haiku, dickhead. Isn't a limerick just like, there once was a girl that worked at the rubber factory. Yeah. And I yearned all my days to give her my flubber daiquiri. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, man. Yeah, you know what a limerick is. And yeah. what I just read was a limerick, dickhead. Isn't it like an Irish... Um, flubber daiquiri. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an up and down a pentameter kind of thing, right? I don't think I didn't think it was syllable related, but let's not uh, take the poetry class English major's word for it. All right, well, let's believe the I guy did in write the fucking dunce helmet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have one more. Would you like to hear it, Jake? Yes, I would. Yeah, bitch, I'm from Lincoln, Montana. <laughs> Drop come from heaven. Call that manna. 
Girl, undo that blouse. Let's make this a full house. R.I.P. my boy, Danny Tanner. <laughs> so that wow. could have been what he wrote on the bulletin board. Telepathic. I've been summoned. Dude, that's incredible. Also, thank, thank you, Jake. How did he need <laughs> <to> look- <laughs> Okay, yeah. He sounded very Irish. <laughs> how did he need money if he lived in a, a shed in the woods? Uh, I mean, if it wasn't subsistence living, he still needs to buy groceries and shit. Okay. Was he, like, chopping up his own fucking meat? And- he, he was. The neighbor's dog. Here's what I'm thinking it's for. <laughs> he didn't make a lot of money as a teacher. I think he made, like, something like 2300 bucks a year, which back then would have been, like, not even twenty grand. Mm-hmm. So he wasn't making a lot of money as a teacher, so he didn't have a lot of savings. He would hit his mother and his brother up for money constantly. And I'm just judging by what I saw that they got out of the cabin when he was arrested. But there was a ton of supplies that were used to make bombs. So I'm guessing he used this money to make chemicals and for materials to make these, these, these packages. Aside from that too, he traveled extensively. Most of the bombings occurred out West in the Midwest or in the Northeast. So he had to travel when he traveled. He usually used Greyhound and he usually stayed overnight in hotels. He was not sending these packages through the U S postal service. He was, but he would do it close by to where the bomb was going to detonate. Just because he wanted to be close or he didn't trust it to travel long distance. I think he knew he would just get caught if he was just mailing it from, like, if every bomb came from right. Lincoln, Montana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. what are the odds? Did so, he, like, uh, was he a classic stick around for the aftermath guy? That's a great question. I don't know that. He has to, right? I mean, if he's going close enough to, like, mail it yeah. that far, I feel like... I don't know. That is a good question. I don't know. The I have no idea. That. I mean, how many of these did it even do? I don't want to jump ahead. Oh my god, an explosion! And there's a guy jerking off on top of a building. Oh my god, Ted, put it away. <laughs> I just <laughs> love heights. <laughs> <laughs> there were 16 bombs. Wow. Three people were killed. 16 bombs total in his bombing. He did, he mailed six. He mailed or dropped off 16 bombs. From what years? So 1978 to 1995. This happened. There were two that did not detonate. Three that killed people. I'm, I'm out of fingers right now. And Jake, you mind taking off your uh, socks and shoes so I can count piggies too? <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. And then the rest seriously injured people. Okay. There was actually one bomb. All right. So the bombing started a month before he started dating that woman at the uh, rubber foam factory. Oh, it started before yeah. her. Okay. So it lasted from 78 to 95. Now, in 78 was the first bombing. That happened in Northwestern University in May of 78. So a lot of times these, these bombs were either going to college professors, people were, who were lobbyists for, for, like, fucking cutting trees down, shit like that. And also they would go toward, like, a, one of them was a bomb on a plane on an American Airlines flight. He yeah. tried to blow up a plane, but fortunately, it didn't detonate. However, smoke did fill the cabin, and 12 people were treated for smoke inhalation. He got it on the plane without He got it onto the, the plane. Yeah, he was not on the plane. This is before the whole TSA thing, right? Like, back then, yeah, it used to be, yeah. 1979, maybe? Yeah. There's I guess he could just get on, put a, plane, a bomb on there, and get off the plane? Yeah, dude, back in the day, you used to be able to do whatever you want on planes. Yeah. Planes used to just blow up all the time. Yeah, what would you, you just, do on planes, Jake? What would I do on plane? Out the aisle and then kind of pop out the emergency exit slide. Grab this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> loosen it off my head. Yeah. Um, okay. I always thought that his name, the nickname was Unibomber, like university. That was part of it. Okay. It was it it was U N A and not U N I because the A stood for airlines. Seriously? Yep. University and airlines bomber. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. I never knew that. That's crazy. So I did know the university thing. It was targeted. Are you fucking with me? No, I I swear to God. It's just so funny watching you explain something with a dunce helmet on. (laughs) It is. The odds are stacked against me. (laughs) Would it be easier if I had my eyes crossed when I talked? (laughs) I honestly, I was more on the pulse of this thing than I had previously thought. So, kudos to me. But I digress. Please go on. <laughs> the next year, after he tried bombing the plane, John, he sends a bomb to the president of United Airlines, a gentleman by the name of Percy Wood. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, one thing I would like to add about many of his bombs is he included at least a, one piece of wood into the bomb package, 
Or he sent them to somebody with the word wood in their name, which I guess referred to his love of nature. Okay. His cabin. He's really not a... It's the Rose Cabin. Yeah, he's not very subtle. No, he's not. Yeah, d- d- fucking people who have the wrong last name. Fucking Hunter <laughs> Wood, you are toast, yeah. brother. I went into the woods to bomb myself. And I took the <laughs> joke more often bombed by Jake McCarrick. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of a bummer he got caught so often. I would love to see Chris Wood get one of his bombs. <laughs> Do you know how big these packages were that he was mailing? I do know that the one that I saw that they found when they when they got to his cabin was it was smaller than a shoebox. It was like a small white block. And when they unwrapped it, it's actually a fascinating story as to like how they were able to detonate this bomb. There were three guys. They weren't FBI guys. They were just like I think they were like defense contractors. And um the article <laughs> Take it, Jake. <laughs> You've been relieved. <laughs> what was it you said? The dumb Walden quote. He was trying to lick peanut butter off his own nose. <laughs> but it's a popular science article, which explains how the final bomb, which was found at his cabin, was detonated, and it took days. And um, there's a, uh, a replica of the bomb. So it's like a small box, and there's, there's nails put into it, and there's screws, which he made himself. He also made his own glue from animal hooves. Yikes. Yeah. This is all in his cabin. This is all in his cabin. He's assembling and fucking like doing chemical work in this little cabin. All in his cabin. One and a half acres. Yep. But he's getting supplies from actual town. Yeah. Yeah. And dude, he would make the bombs and then he would take them on a fucking Greyhound bus. Wow. Okay, well, I guess he was confident or ready to fucking die. Mm-hmm. Did you just have him on his lap like a fucking <laughs> lady going to visit her son? He had it buckled yeah. into the seat. Jesus That's one Christ. way to get someone not to sit next to you on those things. <laughs> a ticking package. But yeah, it was pretty wild. And in that, uh, that uh, popular science article, the three guys talk about thinking of how intelligent he was because they would get to a point where I love watching you fumble with this fucking buckle, Jake. You do not have to keep <laughs> buckling it. Number one. I, I and number two, it loosens. I do like seeing him lose circulation, though. So don't tell him any more ways on how to loosen that. All right. Lips are sealed. Throwing out the key. But before I move on, I just want to say these three guys who were able to successfully detonate this bomb, or defuse this bomb, I should say, they said they would reach a point they would go just... It, it lasted, like, I think a week to, to, re- to get it to a point where they felt comfortable saying that, all right, this is fine to handle. But they would get to a point where they would make incremental progress and then they'd be like, oh, fuck, like, this is clearly, this is not the way this is supposed to go. This is rigged a different way. Yeah, yeah he's doing shit his own way. Yeah, and initially... Self-taught, no lessons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I play chords a little differently. Um, on that note... Oh, for John? Oh, wow. Oh. John, you got it back. So quickly? So quickly. I thought it was a good joke. I thought you so, were suave. All right, so from 78 to 95, he mails 16 bombs. Two of them don't explode. He kills three people. Many people are permanently maimed or injured. People lose yeah. fingers. There's the people who, uh, all these people who died or got really maimed were the ones who opened it, I suppose? No, not in every case. Unfortunately, the first guy in particular... The first guy that the first uh, bomb was addressed to was a professional named Buckley Christ. He was suspicious, so he called a security guy named Terry Marker to come to his office, and he's like, Terry, why don't you open this for me? And it blew up in Terry's face. Whoa. He wasn't as seriously injured as people further down the line. However, the guy had a fucking bomb blow up up in his fucking face. Another time, a secretary, she got fucked up with a bomb that was meant for her boss. Are, they, are these all instances of the boss being like, uh... It looks bomby. It looks and a little bomb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, and did you say the first guy, his name was Buck? That's crazy. Yeah, he, he, he was going Buck Buck in the chat. <laughs> Actually, he... Oh, uh, yeah, he would be, because he's still got all those fingers. <laughs> Everybody else isn't so lucky. He could talk to type, too. Oh, that's right. Buckley, if you're out there, I apologize for, <laughs> for misunderestimating your typing ability. 
All right. So from 78 to 95, all these bombs are mailed, and they have no idea who fucking did this. I do want to add this, okay? Oh, I'll get to that in a second. All right. So at this point, the Unabomber's finished his manifesto, and he's reaching out to sizable media outlets saying, like, look, I want you guys to fucking publish this. If you publish it, I'm not going to send any more bombs. As uh, anonymously? Yes. Yeah. He's sending it. He really wants the New York Times and the Washington Post to publish it. Initially, they're like, uh, I don't know. Um, they confer with the FBI director at the time was a guy named Louis Free and the attorney general who was uh, Janet Reno, who played was played by Will Ferrell in Saturday Night Live, Jake. That's right. Initially, they're apprehensive about publishing this. So uh, the guy who runs Penthouse, Bob Guccione, he pub- he pub- big sleazy. <laughs> <laughs> he publicly says like like yeah like we'll fucking put this out there like we we hear that he's looking to get his shit published we'll put it out there. So the Unabomber contacts him and says like look I don't really want this in Penthouse but here's the concession <laughs> I'll make. He's like if only Penthouse is willing to publish my manifesto, I can I can put it down to one bomb and then I'm done. But if it's the New York Times and Washington Post, no more bombs. If it's going to be Penthouse, one more bomb. <laughs> if it's, oh if it's going to be Blacktail, too. Oh, my God. If it's Jugs, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, that's a stinker move right there, dude. He really said, I will do one more. Is, is that, I got to do one more if it's going to be Penthouse. That's fucking insane. That's awesome. Where is he even Awful. getting the fucking feedback from? Like, he doesn't have cable in his cabin. Is he just going to town every once in a while and, like, getting the news? Somebody has yeah. to be, like, getting the newspaper for him unless he's going every day. He goes to town and he hangs out at the library. Every single day? I don't know about every day, but pretty often. He reads it through the neighbor's window yeah. <laughs> <laughs> while they're eating breakfast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just tapping. Can you show me what today's Garfield yeah. says? Yeah, I was going to say, can, I, I, found can your, I read the funnies? I found your dead dog. <laughs> <laughs> holding up a dead Dog carcass. <laughs> yep, that's what I figured from the visual you did. That act out. It was like a cat. Oh, oh yeah, you didn't want it to mistakenly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is probably two hands for that dead dog. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, um, the FBI director and the attorney general agree. Tell the, the Washington Post and New York Times that, like, just go ahead and fucking do it. Let's see what happens. So they publish it. It's called Industrial Society and Its Future. And it's 35,000 words long. And it is coherent all the way through. Yeah. He does make a lot of very interesting points. I believe it. Okay. And there's, there's so much shit that's almost predicted. Like, is he like anti-plastic and like, is that any it's part more, of it? All right. So I guess that would be part of it. But some of the biggest takeaways were that people are essentially creating busy work. And technology is basically taking people's freedom away. And they don't even realize it yet. They're constantly giving up small bits of freedom for these perceived advancements in technology. My God. And one of the things that... Why, who gets it now? John? Jake? Oh, yeah. Oh. All he said was, my God. <laughs> oh, it, there's a delay. Yeah. I'm sure he said something oh, I know. plenty dumber That's a few <laughs> seconds ago. But w- one of the things that I found most interesting where he's talking about um, genetic manipulation is he's like, the first, first they're going to paint it like they're... They're doing it out of morality. So they'll be like, hey, we found a cure for cancer if we modify this gene. Mm. People are going to be like, yeah, fucking do it, man. <laughs> Jake, if you lick that thing, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> I want to say something, but it's holding my mouth shut. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Can you see if you can make your tongue fight through those two straps? No, no. That is the way uh, the beef eater guards wear their helmets, too. Ooh. And this guy looks like a fucking beef eater. If you <laughs> Beef, chicken, <laughs> muskrat, whatever meat you got. I was always afraid to call him a muskrat eater. <laughs> now that we got it out there. Jake, you ever eat muskrat? I've never had muskrat. Mm. Uh, I'll have to grill you up some. <laughs> but there's a lot to take in. And uh, for as intelligent as he is, it's not as dense as I expected it would be. There's even a very funny joke in there where he's talking about how we're going to de- develop machines to the point where... Instead of the machines adapting to us, we're going to have to adapt to the machines, and then we're going to become slaves to them. And when he, Dude. when he, when he shows this logic, uh, he punctuates it by saying, "Holy robots!" <laughs> <laughs> what year was he working on this for? Uh, decades, or was it like his last? I have to assume this is written in the nineties. I don't know. Uh, 
it was it was published in the nineties, but yeah. I don't know if it was just you know written over time. I did find a typo in there. I think he probably just got to where he was like, I'm not doing this over. <laughs> so he gets it out there, and then once it's publicized, his brother David, uh, who now has a wife and he's a normal functioning member of society, it seems like a very good guy. He starts seeing some similarities in letters that that uh, Teddy John's written him, and shit that's written in this fucking manifesto. The ticking letters that he sends. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude! One funny thing that he would do to the letters to his brother, where like he would just get fed up with how often his brother would communicate, and uh, eventually he wrote back. He's like, "Look, I'm not opening every one of these fucking letters." He's like, "Listen, if something, unless something's wrong, don't write me." He's like, "And if something is wrong, if, if there's an emergency, I want you to put a red line on the back of the envelope." So when their father dies, wow. David sends him an envelope with a red line on the back. So Teddy John opens it, and he sees that his brother said, uh, Ted, I just want to let you know that dad died. He writes back to Ted, doesn't acknowledge the father's death. He says, I just want to commend you on appropriately using <laughs> the red symbol on the envelope. <laughs> sends a letter, it's just ticking. He's like, it's time to celebrate your birthday. <laughs> There's a delay with the helmet. It's, a, it's about two minutes behind. Dude, this look is supreme, man. Dude, this is what they should wear at Buckingham. You know what, Jake? I would Buck pay Buckingham. for you. Buck Buckingham, yes. Palace. Yes. <laughs> I, I think we could probably raise enough money to send you to England. Jesus Christ. And for you to march with those fucking guys. Dude. It's like such a historic place. I can't go and walk. They're no, it's off, man. fucking uh, garbage. Fuck those. It's all people. fake, Jake. It's all fake. Yeah, I've been there. You can fucking oh. play with your wiener all around that place. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it. Yeah, that's why they started calling it Little Ben. <laughs> that's what made Ben Big Ben. It's just <laughs> it's regular sized Ben. All right. It's legal, and net. <laughs> The FBI puts out a reward for a million dollars for his for his arrest. His brother's thinking, like, I think this is really him. So he communicates with the FBI. Wait, what was the uh, switch to they have him locked in now? They don't know it's him yet. His brother contacts the FBI, and there's I think there's meetings over, like, a month period where he flies to different parts of the country to meet with people from the FBI to say, like, look, this is what I have from him, and you could probably pair this up with certain things within the manifesto. Damn. And the FBI split on whether or not they think it's him. So his, like, brother becomes mind hunter, essentially, for his brother. But they have no other leads, do they? It's like, why not take this fucking... There is another guy that they think it is, and this is where my six degrees of Kevin Bacon comes in. Oh, yeah. Been waiting for this. Strap in, everybody. <laughs> so in early 1996, I'm a senior in high school. I'm in my sexual peak, John. Yeah. I haven't had pussy yet. I might want to add that. But I'm He's a... In I, heat. I'm working at the monastery, which I was sad to see is demolished. I went there a couple of days ago. They knocked it down. They're building up the school, whatever. I hear they knocked down places where tragedies happened. Go ahead. So I'm working in this monastery. Every shift, I'm working four hours. And the only real work I have to do is fucking clean up after the priest, after they eat dinner. And the rest of the time, I'm jacking off. Like, I have my own little room. I have my own little bathroom. Yeah, you're Yourself. Jack Shack in the monastery. Yes. Yeah, I am. One other... <laughs> yeah, with a bunch of fucking... <laughs> priests around. Cameras everywhere, dude. <laughs> just fucking... Just, every just, wall is a different painting of eyes that continually <laughs> just watch your little ween. There's some paintings that have multiple eyes that slide out. <laughs> with a bunch you can of, hear them. Let my turn. My turn. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can hear them blessing themselves behind the wall every time. Now, there, my other duty, which took up most of my time, and I still feel bad about this, and I especially feel bad because now this pre priest is on the verge of canonization. <coughs> He's close to becoming a saint. There was a priest who was uh, in a motorized wheelchair, and there were nights where I'm jacking off, and I would hear, hear his wheels coming toward my office, <laughs> and I would pretend like I wasn't there. Because I would have to hold the phone to his ear when he needed to make phone calls, and he just wanted to communicate with his family, I still feel bad about this, all right? You couldn't use his arms? He, he could only, like, manipulate his joystick. Motherfucker ever hear a speakerphone? Goddamn, dude. <laughs> Put the motherfucker nine to dial out, Father Vincent. Come on. <laughs> I'm trying to fucking rub one out in here, dude. <laughs> but, dude, he's already performed a miracle, and he needs one more to become a saint. He's alive still? No, he passed away. So what? Retroactive miracles? No, you can perform them from the grave. That's how they usually get in. Oh. Would a miracle be calling his family on his own? Yeah. 
That's terrible. That was the second miracle. (laughs) I couldn't find Michael, so I had to dial it with my my nose and my wiener. Something happens to him when that red light hits him. (laughs) (laughs) Furman is out tonight, baby. Yeah. But uh, not many people know this is actually a tanning bed for John. (laughs) (laughs) But all right, so what I was getting at was this priest is in a wheelchair, and I have to like do things for him. I have to get him if somebody comes for him. I have to get him if somebody calls for him. So one night in early 1996, I'm working my shift. I'm probably cranked my re- meat at least three times. <laughs> oh my God. Somebody rings the doorbell, which didn't often happen. So I'm like, what the <coughs> fuck? Who is this? I go to answer the door. It's the news reporter, David Murphy from 6ABC. I'm Shout like, out, Whoa. David. Whoa, starstruck. And uh, he's like, hi, I'm David Murphy from 6ABC. I'm here for my massage. <laughs> I'm here for your massage. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, we're here to talk to a representative from the school regarding a former Bonner student who is now being considered as a suspect as the Unabomber. Whoa. So there was a guy that went to my high school, which was Monsignor Bonner, this guy named Leo Burt. who you said his name. Yeah, what? <laughs> Yeah. He's exonerated. No, he's uh, still on the run. I think it was maybe 72. I might have the years off, but it was around that era. I think it was 72. He and a few other classmates from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, they, they, they detonated or sent a bomb to somebody at the university. It killed this guy. They caught the three other guys, but they never caught Leo Burt. So they always assume that he does look like the Unabomber. Like the, uh, you ever see the sketch image of him with the hoodie up yeah. and the glasses on? Yeah. He looks like this fucking guy. It's crazy. So, yeah, Dude. they came to, to ask somebody at the monastery if they'd be willing to give a statement in regards to whether they knew this guy, whether, you know, what the, if, the, if there's still an official the statement. He's still on the run to this, this day. 20, 30 years later almost. Oh, more than that. This is probably Well, I mean, 50. 50, but like from when they came to the school. Yep. 25 years after it happened. From That's what, fucking wild. From what I've read, people seem to think that he made it safely into Canada and he's just been chilling ever since. fucking farmer ever right. since. Wow. Damn, dude. Did you jerk off again at work after that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, let's say yes. I think it's safe to bet yes. <laughs> so that was early 1996. April 3rd, 1996, the FBI feels as though they have enough evidence to go there and arrest him. So they do. They go there, and I think they're posing as, like, census takers. And uh, they knock on the door, yeah. and uh, he answers, and they're like, uh, yeah, Ted, we just need to, like, check out the property and check out the cabin. And he's like, let me just get my coat. And they're like, yeah, no, you don't. Yeah. They grab him. They arrest him. They take him out. And uh, he's charged with 10 counts of sending explosives through mail Whoa. and three counts of murder. Damn. So they didn't pin him on six bombings? I don't think they could prove every one. Gotcha. But he, he ends up pleading guilty to, to all the shit that they cho- do charge him with in January of 1998. And they send him to ADX Florence, Colorado, which is a supermax prison. Yes. Uh, and there's two other bombing buddies that he has there. Ramzi Youssef from the OG Trade Center bombing and Timothy McVeigh from the, um, the Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. City bombings. They're wow. all in the supermax. They're together. all there together. Are they in like the same bombers unit? row? They're on the same, yeah. <laughs> they're on the same bowling team there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are they uh, in the uh, keep them away from wires division of the jail? <laughs> it's uh, no exposed wires or anything. One thing, Ted Kaczynski would communicate with people who randomly sent him letters. Really? Yeah. And I wouldn't have looked otherwise, but like this week I've been on a big Teddy K kick. So I found out like he was always very polite when people would send him letters. The serial. And there's one salutation that he used that I love. He signed one letter, yours for wild nature. Ted Kaczynski. Dude, Isn't he that cool? sounds so cool. That is. Holy robots and. Unfortunately, going to be my new email <laughs> yeah. signature. <laughs> I'm going to start saying holy uh, robots from now on. <laughs> Ted had some good points. <laughs> he himself should have been a lobbyist. <laughs> if he thought so strongly about it, you know? He did, and he was encouraged. Could have been an EPA lobbyist <laughs> or a freaking. The other thing. <laughs> He was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, but he claims that that was a political diagnosis to make him crazier than he seemed. Was Once he was in jail, yeah. they diagnosed him that? Yeah. Was it Ted Kaczynski or was it Timothy McVeigh, the one who went down to Waco while everything was happening? Timothy, Timothy McVeigh. McVeigh. Okay. Yeah, he was selling, like, fucking playing cards or something down there. 
For real. <laughs> really? A little, sh- little shakedown yeah, street was, action. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was this is where sh- people were like gathered balloons. to watch. Yeah, yeah, close yeah, good, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ice cold fatties, two for 20. <laughs> grilled it's expensive cheese. for the 90s. <laughs> Dollar grilled cheese. <laughs> ice cold fatties, two for 10. Let's bring it back to the 90s. You going to come down and get some ice cold fatties tomorrow? I can't wait. Oh, it's you know, I might go to that concert tomorrow. Yes, yeah. dude. I might. Dude, hell yeah. I'm going to be down there getting them. Fucked up. Yeah, I think I'm just getting a haircut tomorrow. I'm doing a podcast. Um, maybe I will. Maybe I'll see y'all down there. Yeah, maybe I'll, there I'll, I'll shake my little tushy a little bit. Oh, a couple more things I want to add about Teddy K. Yeah, tell me. They preserved his cabin. Oh, really? They actually were able to take it out of there. So eventually, so they can do historical tours? Why the fuck? Dude, not far off. So they took it. Pretty initially, much. they took it to FBI headquarters to analyze. Yeah. Then it ended up in a place called the Museum in Washington, D.C. Whoa. And it was on display. You could walk up to the fucking cabin and touch it. The legit cabin. You couldn't walk inside. They had like a little barrier there. Yeah. But you could walk up to Ted Kaczynski's cabin and fucking touch it. Like not a That's replica. Fucking the real his cabin. Wow. What were they yeah. using? Like, what were they Dude, studying it for that they fucking relocated? They do that shit all the time. I mean, in Amsterdam, Anne Frank's fucking house has a dunk tank. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you got to try not to make any noise when you hit the water. <laughs> I expect that from Mike Jake. But I'm you? sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's the helmet. It's cutting off circulation. I can't filter the jokes as much, plus the red light. I'm oh, telling you, know. once that red light hits him, I know it's it activates light. bad boy mode in Jake. <laughs> but it was at this place called the Museum in Washington, D.C., but they closed in 2019. It's currently at, uh, at FBI headquarters, but it's in an area that the public can visit. It's somebody's office. <laughs> it's like Dude, it's called Overflow the, office. It's called the FBI Experience. It's like a public museum. You have to make an appointment to go. So I messaged uh, one of our state senators today. You have to go through them to get an appointment. Your own state. Where? What state is it in? It's is in it, D.C. But you have to go through your own state's yes. senators yep. to get on the I, list. I emailed uh, Senator Bob Casey today. And? To see if I no, you go. did not. Yeah, I didn't hear anything. I just sent it like an hour before you guys <laughs> got here. But there were these some FBI list. agents well, <laughs> outside my house. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here's the deal. Like, I spent all week looking up bombs, so odds are I will get the FBI experience <laughs> one way or another. <laughs> But it does look like a cool museum. Yeah, you'll either be wearing bracelets or not. <laughs> Give it up. I know it's coming. I know so, it's coming. Hey, somebody, anything goes in chat that get me a second helmet. <laughs> Preemptive. I know it's coming. It's not even coming yet. <laughs> just put it it's, there's a delay. <laughs> <laughs> But for real, I, I encourage you guys and I encourage each of you out there to read his manifesto. It is very interesting. I will. That's uh, yeah. not very long, right? That's like no. five-page paper. Uh, a little longer than that. Ten-page? I, I don't know. It's like Seven-page? Yeah, there's also an audio book 35, version. 35,000 words. It's who, read by Ted. Cause it's who the <laughs> fuck narrates it? I don't know. It's like two and a half hours long, I think. Just a pleasant-voiced uh, anonymous person. It's Danny DeVito. <laughs> I would 100% buy that audio I would too, yeah. yeah. He actually, Holy robots. <laughs> um, a couple funny things I want to add that I found on, on uh, Ted Kaczynski Reddit. One was somebody was mentioning the Limerick. They're like, D- does anybody have any idea what the Limerick said that he wrote about that lady? People are just like, no, 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 I can't find it. One guy's like, wait, was she a lady from Nantucket? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was expecting. Yeah. I'll get better at my limericks. I will get better. I think you have to completely change what you think a limerick is in your head. I don't think so. And if anybody is a limerick specialist in the chat, please let me know. But as far as I'm concerned... (laughs) Let us know in the Patreon episode. It's it's five lines. Right after this. Five lines. The first two lines are eight or nine syllables. Eight or nine? Yes. That sounds awful. Approximate. Third Third and fourth lines are five to six syllables. And the final line is eight to nine syllables and also has to rhyme with the first and second lines. So lines one, two, and five all rhyme. Three and four are their own separate rhyme with less syllables. Yes. I've written a limerick or two in my day. Yeah, let me hear one. No. (laughs) (laughs) If anybody in the chat has a fun take Kaczynski fact you'd like to hit us with, please feel free to hit us. Uh, what state? It was in Montana. He was in Montana. And just in the middle of nowhere, Montana. Yeah, and he would he would leave 
from the Greyhound station in Butte, Montana, which was about two hours south of Lincoln, Montana. And he, how would he get around? He had a car? No, he had a bicycle. He fucking biked into that town? He had a bike. It's like an all-day excursion. He would try to get rides. He would try to hitchhike or Dude. get a neighbor to take him, but yeah. more so than anything else, what he would fucking bike. fucking annoying putz. I know. <laughs> I catch a ride. You going into the town that's two hours away? Oh, you just got back? <laughs> Why are you so sweaty? <laughs> Sorry, I just finished killing your dog, but <laughs> man, Ted could have made a big, uh, big change in the world if he uh, just wasn't a fucking insane person. He did. Damn. Oh yeah, he did in a bad way. He could have made a positive impact though. He had the right ideas. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on there, Mike? Uh, the first comment I saw was Chase Davis saying they do say retards pack some heaters. <laughs> well, what is that? In I don't even to? know. <laughs> All right, so someone reckon it says that uh, Ted Kaczynski is a wildcat that I believe, believe was framed similarly to Charles Manson, who also may have been a part of the MK Ultra program. Dude, I want to learn more about the MK Ultra program. Every time I hear it, I think of Michelob Ultra. Oh, oh it does. Yeah, it does yeah. make me thirsty, yeah. 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 Love a light beer. Oh, my God. What's your favorite light beer? Um, Michelob Ultra. For real? That's the one I was the the lightest... As a drinker, I never had one of those. Yeah, um, they're just like a Miller Lite, basically. Mm-hmm. I did. Bit. I did like Miller Lite. I think Coors Light was my favorite light beer. Miller Lite in a fucking ice cold bottle is pretty good. I like the cans. Yeah, you like cans? Yeah, cans fucking suck, man. I like it in the can, baby. Yeah, you I do. Like, <laughs> yeah, Miller fucking Lite's good. Banquet. Hey guys, talking about getting butt butt. <laughs> 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 That's probably a pretty good. Are we good on Ted? Should we take it over to the Patreon episode? Yeah, I I think that that's more than enough. But yeah, if anybody else wants to add anything on Ted, I'd be happy to to talk for a few more minutes about him. And we are going to do an AMA uh, on our Patreon page after this episode. So if you're not already a patron, please come over, join the Patreon, and we'll be doing some more. More chat interaction and uh, goofing. Yeah. Oh, and we got passing a, a, the helmet. a whole new uh, soundboard of things we can play oh, with. Yeah. On the- oh, yeah. We'll be uh, unveiling <laughs> our new soundboard that we have. <laughs> yeah. Our, our new producer, Jeff's been crushing it. Jake's been crushing it, too. And they're teaming up to uh, provide us with some cutting-edge sounds that I can't <laughs> wait to be revealed. I haven't even heard them yet. Can, I can't wait to see what you guys are working on. Anyone in the on. Patreon can vote on the clips. to get rid of them or keep them. Okay. And if they got ones they want to add. Okay. We We're going to play that. them all when yeah. we go over to the AMA? Yeah. All right. Get to something to do. Did you fill in the other <laughs> six? I did. Okay, I, nice. I filled in, yeah. I think it's both completely filled now. Hell yeah. All right. So we're going to head over to Patreon for our monthly AMA. So feel free to join us over there. It's patreon.com slash little stinkers. That's L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. If you want to join... It's four bucks a month. You get access to all of our episodes early before anybody else gets them for free. You get an ep- extra episode each month. You get access to the live AMA each month. Uh, we're doing a movie watch along. Uh, is it next week? Either I think next so. Week yeah. Or the week after. All right. Yeah, we're doing that. Um, we're gonna have a a book club. The next book club meeting coming up soon. Yeah. So I'll let everybody know. Uh, I'll get everybody's ideas for what we're gonna read there. Manifesto. <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> what if we all wrote I would, manifestos? I would read the fucking shit out of that manifesto. I mean, if it came out with things that. like Holy Robots and Yours in Wild Nature, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Dude, Yours for Wild Nature is... I, I could, How can you not get pussy when you write like that? I know. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm getting <laughs> far away from telling up. you what the Patreon is. <laughs> but, yeah, if you enjoy what we do, I promise you... All you of our travel videos, too, yep. come exclusively to Patreon for at least the first month or so. Uh, and some of it just stays on Patreon. We're going to have a uh, yep. longer version of our... Uh, our Ouija board scene coming to Patreon soon. Oh, yep. yeah. And on top of that, uh, we're planning our next uh, trip, which is going to be, we're going to leave from Skankfest, and we're going to head further out west and do some bad boy stuff out there. And we're going to have a ton of content, and most of it is just going to be on Patreon. So I got a ton wait. of good sh- stuff coming down the pike. And Patreon is the clearest way to support us and to allow us to keep doing dumb shit like this. And who knows, like, if, if the Patreon keeps growing, we can afford another helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget we have our first patreon goal oh, God. that has been set up for the past couple 
months or so, <laughs> uh, when we reach 2,000 patrons, we will be putting Jake back in the foam pit. And when we reach 2,010 patrons, we will allow Jake to start trying to get out of the foam pit. Jake. So he will be trapped for some amount of time. And we will probably uh, rent this out. And if you're local, we'll have a little pizza party there while we uh, hurl insults at Jake and make it harder oh psychologically for him to get out of the foam pit. You know, I'm ready. Jake, for those that aren't aware of what happened to you, yeah. can you describe to them what happened in that foam pit? <coughs> I, yeah, I did a nice family trip to Sky Zone, and I thought it was going to be a good time. And uh, my kid jumped into the foam pit. was like, I'm stuck. Help. And I, like he was just sitting on top of it, but he could tell I wanted to play. So I jumped in afterwards and immediately like sunk to the bottom of the thing. And then it took, I'm not even kidding, probably close to an hour for me to get out of the uh, foam pit. It required assistance from like at least three Sky Zone employees. Uh, it scarred me mentally. It's shaken all of my confidence. So uh, we're gonna make him relive that um, for hopefully a six-hour period. I haven't had sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. I broke a bed in the meantime. Would you be cool with this if we set a date for this? Mm. What if we invited people to come cheer you on and get in get in there swim with you? Cheer me on. To encourage you. How naive. <laughs> Maybe I if do. you wear floaties this year, it'll be easier. <laughs> <laughs> I, dude, I, listen, I've been practic- I've been working on the high jump at the gym yeah. and I not to brag, I can do push ups again. Dog. First time in ever like forever. I saw you pushing that sled, dog. Uh, oh I'm woof woof. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm ready. Motherfucker about to run the I did a ride. <laughs> <laughs> I put the uh, put the idiot in. I did a ride. <laughs> Jake, what do you think the dogs would do if they saw you about to get on the sled? Oh, I think they would <laughs> strangle themselves with the leash just to get out of it. A lot of we're well, gonna crazy. need a bigger yeah. dog. <laughs> it's crazy. Twelve oh, dogs just are yeah. playing dead at the same time. Oh, dude, I'd, I'd love to, but I just got out of a cone. <laughs> I, I got six more weeks where I can't do anything. <laughs> so that's where we're throwing Jake. In just a few sh- small Patreons. Please don't sign up. In the future. <laughs> Fuck it. We're throwing some Huskies in there with them. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. They oh, want we'll revenge. Get a, little sna- a big snake in there. Ooh. Oh, dude. And you know what I learned about those things? They they Snakes. never, they don't clean the foam. They, they how, are how disgusting. How would you do that? Take me through, you know, on the I've Patreon, you're going to take me through the process <sighs> of cleaning a okay. foam pit. All right. But yeah, we're heading over to the Patreon. That's patreon.com slash little stinkers. Uh, thank you guys for watching tonight. If you're bailing now, thank you for watching. We appreciate you guys joining us then. But uh, special thanks to those of you that are going to join us over there on the Patreon in a couple minutes. We'll see you guys there. Love thank you, guys. you guys. Thank you guys. There's so much fucked up shit to get into.